This noon, we have an update on a shooting that injured two this morning. What police are saying next. And we have a look at the road closures that could affect your commute this weekend as well into next week. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We start with an update this noon on a shooting in San Antonio on the east side. Police say that someone opened fire into a crowd and we're now learning there was a third victim. Two victims, a two year old and a woman in her 20s, both shot in the leg. A third victim also hit. This happened just after 1030 last night on Timolo Drive near Gimbler Road, not far from the AT&T Center. Police say the group of people were gathered in front of a house after a funeral when someone in a black Jeep Cherokee drove up and someone inside that vehicle started shooting. The vehicle then turned around and a person inside fired into the crowd a second time hitting those three victims. According to police, the third victim was taken to a local hospital prior to officers getting there. All of the victims are reported to be in stable condition, but no arrests have been made. And members of a West Side family able to breathe a sigh of relief, but at the same time, they're also holding their breath, wondering what will happen next. All of this in response to a crash overnight involving an SUV that plowed into their home. A woman inside the home in the 800 block of Kirk Place was able to walk away with only minor injuries. But as Katrina Weber tells us, the family is left with a major mess to clean up. Trouble needed no invitation. It barged right into this home. San Antonio police believe the driver of this SUV was drunk and lost control on Kirk Place near General Hudnell. He took out a light pole, leaving it dangling then jumped the curb and slammed into the home. I just heard a big boom and I look out my window and I just see my neighbor's house busted open. I don't know what to do. But it didn't take long for Devin Perez to figure it out. The 12 year old called for his mother, then called 911. They were asleep when the crash happened just after three this morning. So was their neighbor, a woman about 20 years old and her baby, both on a couch right near the wall. A family member says she suffered a minor concussion and the baby was slightly bruised. Pettis says the driver wasn't sticking around to help. He ran that way, but uh, her brother, he went, to stop there. he went to stop him over there and he caught him. Police took over from there and arrested the driver on a DWI charge. Once the SUV was out of the way, firefighters and the family tried to shore up the house and board up the hole. Even as bad as the damage was, this is one case where things really could have been a lot worse. If that SUV had hit just a few inches over, it would have taken out the gas line. Still, it was more than enough excitement for Pettis. Crazy night for you. Very. <laughs> I'm tired. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers now asking the public for some help in identifying and locating a suspect who's responsible for a robbery at the Victoria's Secret located at Ingram Park Mall. It happened back on June 7th and police say the suspect walked into the business and began grabbing stuff and then hiding them from the staff. That's when an 18 year old woman approached her and the robber threatened to shoot everyone in the store. Police say that she then took some more items and then left. If you have any idea who the woman in the screen is, you're being asked to call 210-224-7867. Two San Antonio residents safe this afternoon after a fire broke out at their southeast side home. San Antonio firefighters responded to the home in the 300 block of Pamela Drive this morning after reports of smoke coming from the back of the house. The two occupants were able to make it out safely. The cause of the fire unknown at this time. However, the flames did cause significant damage, especially to the attic. Uh, but there was a significant amount of fire that had made its way up into the attic and uh, gave us a pretty difficult time. Rodriguez said it is possible for people to have an electrical fault anywhere in the house that causes a fire, but once it reaches an attic, it becomes more problematic for fire crews. It almost goes without saying these days. Going to be a hot one, and those clouds are probably not going to do us much good. No, they are not. In fact, yesterday the clouds stuck around longer than anticipated, and we still made it to 102 around San Antonio. Today, 101 for the high temperature. Take a look at how warm it is already out there. You can see that there are some clouds out to the west, so near Uvalde, Spofford, Del Rio, some cloud cover, keeping temperatures a couple of degrees cooler, but it's still in the upper 80s. Meanwhile, it's near 90 around San Antonio. It's 93 Catula, 91 in Pleasanton, 92 
92 in Gonzales. We'll get a, a metro view here of the area and you can see 92 already at Port SA, 90 in New Braunfels, 91 in Pleasanton. These clouds have really started to break up and we're going to just have a mostly sunny afternoon ahead and it's going to feel a little hotter than what the thermometer actually reads outside. It already feels like 100 at Rio Medina because of the high humidity. It feels like 95 in Converse and it feels like 94 at the San Antonio International Airport. So for the remainder of the day, expect the heat 101 for the high temperature. Sun sets at 832, but it stays warm. It's still going to be 90 degrees by 9 p.m. Okay, a glimmer of hope. There's a little bit of a breeze out there. If you find some shade, wind gusts of about uh, 20 miles per hour from the southeast. And hey, it's almost the weekend coming up. I'm going to have your poolside weekend forecast for you. Trust me, you're going to need a way to stay cool. All that forecast in just a bit. Ursula, David. Thank you so much, Sarah. And now to the traffic. There will be some closures this weekend. Stephen Cavazos with our Traffic Authority has a look at which closures are going to be interfering with your moving around this weekend and even for your work commute next week. Several closures are still taking place in and around the Alamo City. Now, while we are looking ahead to the weekend, we're also going to get a peek of what's going to be taking place next week. All right, let's go ahead and start. So we know that work continues along Loop 1604 on the northeast side of San Antonio striping work. Now, this did start on Sunday, July 17th, but will be wrapping up according to TxDOT Saturday, July 23rd, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So for those late night owls or early bird commuters, make sure you plan ahead because there'll be various lane closures along Loop 1604 eastbound from the bypass frontage road ramp to Lookout Road. But of course, as I mentioned, we're looking ahead to the next few days. Bridge work will continue to take place next week on Monday, July 25th to Tuesday, July 26, 830 in the evening to 530 in the morning. Full eastbound main lane closure at FM 1518 is what drivers can expect. But we're already looking ahead to, toward August because road work will continue also off Loop 410 on the west side of San Antonio. That did start on Monday, July 18th but according to TxDOT, we'll wrap on Monday, August 1st. August 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon is when we can expect that work to take place. So we know that it's going to be a busy time. So make sure that you plan ahead, especially before morning rush gets here. Alternating lane closures on the frontage roads in both directions from Marbach Road to Ingram Road is what drivers can expect. But of course, that information on our website. If you have those phones, make sure you open your camera app right now. Scan the QR code. It's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and it has all the lists of the closures that are taking place in our area. And today there's a blood drive at Soldiers Angels. That's off of Loop 410 near Perrin Bidal. The San Antonio community has an overall two and a half day supply. Type O blood supply is one day short of seven days needed. And in addition, platelet donors are also needed to find out more. Or if you have any questions, you can visit SouthTexasBlood.org. Do you want to save money and keep cool during the summer heat? We'll tell you how you might could do both in the next half hour. And Aggies head coach Jimbo Fisher had a lot to say at the SEC Media Days, but how does the coach see his team heading into this season? Andrew Seeley has that coming up later on in sports. Mattresses, styrofoam, plastic bags, just some of the items a local group dedicated to cleaning up our creeks and river find every month in San Antonio. The nonprofit River Aid San Antonio has picked up thousands of pounds of waste and they're looking for volunteers to keep our waterways cleaner for an event this weekend. Tiffany Huerta says a look at the impact these cleanups have in our community. We formed because we were tired of talking about a problem. Charles Blank, the executive director of River Aid San Antonio, says they started cleaning up our creeks and river in early 2021 and haven't stopped since. In our first year, we picked up 66,000 pounds of trash and to date we're above 100. The nonprofit hosts several cleanups each month, finding all sorts of items. Box springs, shopping carts, styrofoam, plastic bags. This weekend, volunteers will focus on this portion of the Salado Creek near Sir Winston Drive and Blanco Road. Two months ago, the group picked up more than 6,000 pounds of trash at this portion of the Salado Creek. Today, trash fills the area again. We're all connected to this program. Even if you don't use Salado Creek, even if you think you don't litter, um, the whole city is tied to our creeks through our watersheds. When it rains, things that are in your backyard, your pet's waste, that E. coli, 
gets down to the river, it gets down to the creek, likewise with litter. On Saturday, starting at 8 a.m., volunteers will be cleaning up this area. Charles encourages the community to get involved. We need more support, so please come out and give it. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And just a reminder for you, the San Antonio Humane Society is still having their Empty the Shelters Adoption Special. The adoption fee for dogs and cats, $25. This includes puppies and kittens under one year. The regular adoption process and screening still applies. You can visit their website to see all available dogs and cats. The event ends on the 31st of this month. We need to empty those shelters for sure. Yeah. And we need to get all those little puppies and kittens and all those other little animals up for adoption in the air conditioning. Oh yeah, and you know, I hate to see it sometimes when dogs are getting walked during the peak heat of the day on that hot asphalt. So please remember, make sure to walk your dogs early in the morning or late at night after sunset. Now the aquifer is, has not changed over the last 24 hours. No big dip in the aquifer. That's some good news, but of course the aquifer is still almost 30 feet below the average, the lowest it's been since 2014. We could use some water, but really just not much of a rain chance in our future. As far as the pollen count goes with the lack of rain, at least the pollen's low, molds are low and no tree pollen out there right now. Now coming up in the forecast, we are going to talk about how this weekend will be perfect to spend some time by the pool and whether or not there's any slim chance for rain in our next seven days. I'll have that forecast coming up. So if you remember back to yesterday at this time, we were in the middle 80s, all excited because we had some dark clouds hanging out, oh, thinking yeah. it wasn't going to get to the 100 degree mark yeah, yesterday. And we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. In just mm. two and a half hours, we went from 86 to 100 degrees. Mm. And our high temperature yesterday was 102. Man, that's yeah. like racetrack time. Yeah, and the reason for that is, I mean, the soils are so dry, right? So mm. we have no soil moisture to keep that temperature down. Drought is very, very bad. Not quite as bad as it was in 2011 at this time, but still very bad. And it is hotter, though, this summer than it was in 2011. Yesterday marked our 42nd 100 degree day. That puts us in third place we got the bronze medal okay we are now 2022 is now the third year on record and records go back to 1885 with 100 degree days now we're likely going to be giving 2011 and 2009 a run for their money because this is the forecast over the next several days we are likely going to be seeing 100 degrees at least every single day. Today, our average high temperature is 95, so we're gonna be about six degrees warmer than that. That average temperature bumps up to about 96 tomorrow, but we're still, big picture, just going to be above average 100 degree days. And as you look at the satellite and radar across the state of Texas, Take a look out in East Texas. You can see that there are some showers and storms that have developed, but these are going to run out of time before they can make it to San Antonio and South Central Texas because we've got this heat high firmly in place. There's another heat high right over here across the southeast. And the combination of those two is going to make it very hot all across the United States, especially the lower portion of the U.S. We've got heat advisories, Oklahoma City to Wichita, Kansas, all the way out to New York City. City. And you know it's bad when we have excessive heat warnings for Phoenix, Arizona, because they are expected to get up to 114 today for the high temperature. Makes that 101 here in San Antonio sound a little bit better, even though it's a bit drier in Phoenix, Arizona. But still, everywhere you look around the nation, just about everywhere except for the Pacific Northwest, highs are going to be in the 90s at least. It is hot everywhere. And yes, it is summer, but as I mentioned, 
it is a warm one so far this summer for us. 89 outside at the airport, but it feels like 94 because dew points are up there. They're in the 70s still, so high heat index value out there right now. Elsewhere, we've got 91 in Hondo, 88 in Kerrville, 81 in Rock Springs. Rock Springs, the cool spot on the map. That thermometer is at some higher elevations out there in Rock Springs. 93 in Catula, 93 in Beeville, 88 in Del Rio. Closer view here, you can see these puffy cumulus clouds breaking up. It's already 95 in Divine, 90 in New Braunfels, and 86 in Canyon Lake. Over the next 12 hours, your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a high temperature of 101 right around dinner time, 5 6 p.m. Our winds are going to pick up this evening too. Southeast at about 15 miles per hour, gusting up to about 20. And even by midnight, we're still going to be in the low 80s. It is still going to be a warm evening. Elsewhere, it'll be up to 102 out in Del Rio, 104 in Crazy Springs, and 105 in Gatula. Promised you that poolside forecast. Here you go. Tomorrow, 101 for the high temperature. Sunday, 102. Feeling a little bit hotter than what the thermometer reads because of the high uh, heat index. Uh, pardon me, because of the higher humidity. And as for the UV index, you're going to really want to make sure to put on that sunscreen, wear the hat, all that stuff, because skin damage time could be in less than 10 minutes if you're not careful. Again, unfortunately, no major rain chances in our future. We do have a chance for isolated showers and storms by Wednesday and Thursday. Day. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk about how, yes, the tropics are quiet, but it could ramp up soon. So we'll have those details coming up in a bit. We're counting on it. We need it. Thank you. After that big recruiting class the Aggies had, fans even more excited about this season coming up. That's right, but some of the press doesn't feel the same way. In fact, they're actually tied with Vanderbilt at like fourth or fifth to try wow. and win the SEC. Everyone still likes Bama. Everyone still likes Georgia. But the big question is, what does Jimbo Fisher think? When we come back, we'll hear from the Texas A&M head coach on the Aggies this season. Plus, we had an American record set last night on the track at the national championships. Got that too next. Jimbo Fisher took the stage yesterday at SEC Media Days at the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia, and he tried to squash the personal drama between him and Nick Saban that arose this offseason, saying the two were still friends and ready to move on. He also voiced concerns about the NIL rules being wildly different from state to state, saying it created an unfair playing field. But still, in that environment, Fisher managed to draw in the top recruiting class in the nation. How does he feel about where his program currently stands? When you're a great team, is when your practices are so heated and so competitive and that you know you can't take a day off as a player because someone's taking your job, that's when you really become, and to the first time from a depth standpoint, not from a great player standpoint, but from a depth standpoint, that we're starting, we're getting to that point right now at A&M at a level which I'm very excited about with some young guys pushing older guys, older guys getting better, the guys, that were in, it's, it's going to be a heck of a battle, and that's it's got me the most excited. So I think when you're talking about winning national championships, it's not just understanding how to handle the expectations, it's organizing and structuring the team to get to those points, and I think we're really right now at the, at the, at the beginning of that stage where we can do it consistently and I'm excited about the future of our program really am. The Aggies are about a month and a half from the way from the start of their season on September 3rd against Sam Houston State. Congratulations to UTSA senior wide receiver Zachary Franklin, who was added to the preseason watch list for the Bolitnikoff Award for the second straight season. Franklin is one of 44 players on the preseason watch list for the award, which is presented annually to the nation's outstanding college football receiver by the Tallahassee Quarterback Club Foundation, Inc. Franklin is coming off record-setting season with 81 receptions, 1,027 receiving yards, and 12 touchdowns. San Antonio FC still controls the West. Heading into this weekend's matchup with El Paso Locomotive, the Alamo City Club is riding a four-match winning streak and has outscored their opponents 10-1 over that span. They scored half of those goals in their last match at Toyota Field against Atlanta United 2 in a 5-0 victory. But even with the kind of results they've pieced together lately, there is no slowing down at practice. It was not easy, especially after a 5-0 win. You know, you, you would like to get a little ease into the next week, but it's on to the next one, especially El Paso coming off the loss. They're going to really want to, you know, put their best foot forward, and they're a really talented team, so we need to do the same. San Antonio, San Antonio faces El Paso Saturday at 8.30 p.m. The Astros kicked off the second half of their season with a statement sweep of the American League, leading New York Yankees in a doubleheader yesterday. Houston walked off with a 3-2 win in the early game, then won the nightcap 7-5. The Astros are now 61-32 overall, 
one of three teams in the majors with 60 wins and just two and a half games behind the Yanks for the top seed in the AL. And how about this? Michael Johnson's record is officially a part of the past. Olympian Noah Lyles just blew away the field in the 200 meter dash last night and struck gold at the 2022 World Track and Field Championships in Eugene, Oregon. The time on the clock initially tied him with Johnson's 19.32, but was later adjusted by official timers to 1931, besting the former record by one one hundredth of a second. And guess what? The American and swept the medal stand. I know a couple years ago it felt like Johnson's records would last forever and then yep. Usain Bolt came along. It's nice to see Americans starting to raise the pace too. That guy's flying. I know. That's just moving right there. It's crazy. Thanks, Andrew. You got it. And coming up, we're going to tell you just how to keep your wallet light and also keep cool during the hot temperatures. New today at five, more companies marketing by text and it's annoying to the consumer, no doubt. Today at five, we're gonna take a look at some ways you can stop getting those spam texts from these companies. Japan's Nuclear Regulati Regulation Authority approving a release of radioactive treated water into the ocean. That happened in a meeting today. The water from the Fukushima Dachi nuclear power plant. Regulators say that the treated water has traces of tritium, but overall it's safe enough to be released. According to the Japan government officials, tritium has been found to only emit weak radiation and the impact is low. Construction is going to start in the towns of Okuma and Futaba, where the plant is located to get its approval. Once it is approved, the water is going to be diluted with large amounts of seawater and then released through a newly constructed undersea tunnel. Record setting temperatures continue across the U.S. through the weekend and maybe even longer. Forecasters say more than four out of five Americans could see temperatures above 90 in the next seven days. Some areas under extreme heat warnings and heat advisories. Phoenix could hit 113 degrees today. As Sarah Spivey was telling us, it's going to be hot in Phoenix. Maricopa County has reported more than two dozen heat related deaths since May and in Texas. A lack of water is forcing ranchers to send cattle to the slaughter early and speaking of that heat it's affecting many people across the country and as dave just said animals too one animal sanctuary near pittsburgh has added misting fans to try to keep their animals cool and some animals are taking matters into their own hands like horses at the sanctuary which are now drinking up to 50 gallons of water a day instead of the usual 10 to 20 gallons chickens can be seen holding out their wings. That helps them to cool off. And even bees are gathering outside of their hives in a behavior that's known as bearding to allow more air to ventilate inside. And since we might not be seeing a break from this heat for a while, why not enjoy the summer by staying cool and inside? And save some money. So it's a perfect weekend for a blockbuster. ABC's Ariel Reshef has a look at how your family can save money while also staying cool at the movies. As temperatures soar outside, summer's biggest blockbusters like Top Gun Maverick are soaring to new heights inside your local Cineplex. Having any fun yet? But with some movie chains charging as much as $15 a ticket. You hurt? I mean, my ego's a little bruised. And $10 for a large popcorn, a night out at the movies. Could quickly break the bank. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Movie lover Darius Hughes, a junior high teacher from New Jersey, says he's eager to beat the heat, but he estimates it currently costs about $120 for him, his wife Karen, and two kids to see a film and get some snacks. If you want to compare it to 10 years ago when we would, all five of us would go, uh, it's much less frequent now. The cost is a factor. It's definitely frustrating, but it's part of the whole package of everything being so expensive. One of the easiest ways to bring down the cost? Take the family on a Tuesday. Most movie chains around the country are offering $5 movie tickets all day, all evening on Tuesdays. You can also get a $5 concession. So you can get a cameo-sized drink and a popcorn for $5. So all in all, you can go to the movies and get
get your popcorn on for $10 on a Tuesday. Experts at NerdWallet advise moviegoers to go early, as some theaters offer discounted tickets for late morning or midday shows. They also recommend buying your tickets ahead of time at warehouse stores like Costco or Sam's Club. And if you're an avid movie fan, you may want to join a loyalty program. With typical monthly fees at $10 or less, you can even score discounts at the concession stand and free tickets. And one of the simplest tips, as you heard there, is go to a matinee. We did a little bit of research and we found that if you go to the movies a little bit earlier for a family of four that needs four adult tickets, you can save up to 20 bucks in some cases. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Or you wait for it to come out on video. <laughs> Do the, the movies come out on video anymore? No. Oh. We're waiting they for come it to out come on, out on, on demand screen, streaming. or streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Sorry. okay we're trying to get you back up to date. <laughs> okay. I still have a VHS player. so. You do? Yeah. 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 It's classic. All right. Uh, you know what's not classic? How hot it is this early. It's not <laughs> unique at all. Uh, you know, it is... Uh, fairly unique that we're seeing temperatures this hot. Uh, we really are at 42 days of 100 degree weather. Today is going to be 43 as we just mentioned. It's already 89. It feels like 94. Do I sound like a broken record yet? Hey, we've been talking about throwbacks. Broken vinyl record. There we go. The rest of the day, we're going to be up to 101 for the high temperature this afternoon, right at around 5 p.m. Winds will be breezy from the southeast, gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. Sunsets at 832 and temperatures slowly come down. It'll be mild and warm by 8, by 10 p.m. It'll be in the uh, mid to upper 80s by about midnight as well. So coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about our one hope for rain in the next couple of months, that's the tropics when they start to really ramp up. Right now it's quiet, but I've got those details for you. And we'll talk about why your backyard thermometer may be a little hotter than the official thermometer at the airport. I'll have those details coming up in a bit. Ursula David. Thanks, Sarah. DoorDash tightening its policies relating to alcohol delivery. The reason? They want to prevent underage drinking. The company now scanning a customer's ID in person before handing off any alcohol purchases. Before DoorDash customers had to upload a photo ID to the app in order to purchase an alcohol beverage, but the delivery driver was only required to compare that to a photo ID at the recipient at the door. Now customers will have to meet their delivery person at the door to have their ID scanned in person. The company says this will help ensure alcohol is being delivered to the people who are over the age of 21. For all you Golden Girls fans out there, there's a new pop-up in downtown Los Angeles that has all the throwbacks after the break. And also coming up after the break in sports, a local mixed martial arts artist won a pair of world titles in karate. Andrew Seeley has that story, plus a look at the Super Bowl champs' rings. Ooh. your top headlines for Cheddar News. President Biden has tested positive for COVID-19. The White House saying Thursday that Biden, who is 79, experiencing very mild symptoms but no fever. The president is being treated with the antiviral drug Plaxlovid and is isolating right now at the White House. He will, though, continue working by phone and Zoom, but his public events have been canceled. Meanwhile, the House passed a bill Thursday that will protect the access and use of birth control at the federal level. The Right to Contraception Act, which had passed largely along party lines, would also affirm the right of health care workers to provide contraceptives. And for the first time, criminal insider trading charges have been filed involving crypto. That involving, according to the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, federal authorities filed three wire fraud and one conspiracy to commit wire fraud charges against a former Coinbase employee and two others. The three men were allegedly involved in trades using information about 14 listings on Coinbase. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Wendy of the Wendy's Burger chain has ditched her trademark red pigtails for a new look at one of the restaurants in the UK. The new logo is a flowing emo fringe as described by the company 
and it can be seen at a recently opened location in the hip Camden area of London. The new logo is a nod to the area for, well known for music and fashion. The new Windy, as she is called Emo Windy, was originally part of a Camden Street mural, but now is part of a restaurant's exterior, along with another new look known as Punk Windy. She's even gone viral with people snapping pictures with her new look for Twitter. I wonder how her dad, Dave, feels about that. I don't know. Punk Windy. Time now to break out the cheesecake because we're getting a look at Golden Girls themed pop up. I bet they have a VCR machine in there, too. Oh, 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 let's hope. Everything Golden Girls coming to downtown Los Angeles. KABC's Veronica Miracle has more. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Grab your three best friends because the Golden Girls are back. For the first time ever, fans of the iconic TV show can immerse themselves in all things golden. Girls, this time I think we have really hit the jackpot. From the bedrooms to that hanging garlic, Derek Berry is the mastermind behind other pop-ups like Saved by the Max and Good Burger. And with the help of bucket lifters, he's back at it again. This is one of the shows I've always wanted to bring to life. It just brings me back to a better time, like a more fun time, you know, younger. I remember watching with my parents, being super young. A lot of the jokes are a little bit inappropriate, so if you're watching as a young kid. Yeah, I don't know that nine-year-old Derek should, should have been watching it. Lucky for fans, young Derek was paying attention. Ma, you are making lasagna al forno. What is the occasion? There's no occasion, I just know it's your favorite. The main centerpiece of this golden pop-up is, of course, the food. Tell you what we're going to do, Rose. We're going to eat a cheesecake. Four different kinds of cheesecake are on the menu, and for the main courses, you'll find vegan options, too. So what are your favorite items? I'm, I am uh, going to go ahead and say this is the best lasagna I've ever had. What do you think Sophia's going to have to say about this? Because she thinks her lasagna is the best. I, you know what? I think she would co-sign for it. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say she would co-sign for it. My mom would love to go there. All right, the pop-up opens to the public on Golden Girls Day. Did you know there was such I a thing? did not know that. It is July 30th. Wow. And there will be four other locations across the country opening this fall. The cheesecake looked good, though. It did. The lasagna, too. But you make a better lasagna, you think? I don't know, Ursula. I might have to make some and, and have you be the judge. I volunteer readily. Homemade. I do make homemade lasagna. Wow. It's Neapolitan style, though, so no I'm, no I'm in. All right, no change in the aquifer level over the past 24 hours. Good news is, is that the pollen count, the only allergen that's there is molds, and it's low. One of the reasons why molds are so low is because we just haven't had that much rain and we don't have a ton of soil moisture. So not good news there. You know the drill. Take today's weather repeat it tomorrow over the weekend, but I do have information about the Atlantic hurricane season that you're going to want to stick around for. I'll have that information for you coming up in a bit. I was watching a press conference the other day and they were talking about how hot it was up in the Northeast. Like it was 93. And I'm like, yeah. mm, I guess it's all relative. Pretty hot it, for them. Up in Maine, for instance, if you hit above 90 for three days running, uh -huh. that's called a heat wave. Oh, my goodness, it is. And I'll confess something. I just came from vacation from New York City, uh -huh. and they were at 93 one day. Yes, heat wave. Oh my God! They're and you know, crazy. Major when emergency. you consider the fact that they don't really have a lot of air conditioning like right. we do, and of course how hot the asphalt is, yeah, heat wave makes sense. But one thing that I get, one question that I get is, why is my backyard thermometer so much different than, let's say, the official reading at the San Antonio International Airport? Well, here, here's the thing. So on the left of your screen, you've got an average house, and on the right hand side, you've got what it may look like at the airport at the official reading. So first of all, in order for you to get an official thermometer reading, Reading, it always has to be in the shade, not in direct sunlight. So some of our backyard thermometers tend to be in the direct sunlight. Also, the airport's thermometer is out in the middle of a field with a, a Stevenson box around it. That's what this white box is here. The white paint actually reduces the heat absorption. Meanwhile, as you know, there's a lot of uh, around our house. There's a lot of concrete. There's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, darker materials that could absorb more heat, make that thermometer up higher. 
higher, make that temperature higher, and nearby houses in our concrete can add that radiant heat. Meanwhile, that Stephenson box is placed four feet above the ground in an open field uh, on airport property. So that's why the official thermometer reading might be a little cooler than what your backyard thermometer reads. But then again, you know what? The humidity makes it feel hotter anyway outside sometimes. So outside right now it's 89 degrees. That's the official thermometer reading at the airport. It feels like 94 outside because of high humidity. Dew points in the 70s. And elsewhere we've got 90 in Seguin, but it feels like 94. The yellow numbers here are the heat index values. Look at Canyon Lake, 87, but it feels like 97 up there near Canyon Lake. 94 in Pleasanton, but feels like 99. So just add on a couple of degrees to that temperature and that's what it feels like outside. Meanwhile, by this afternoon, by about 4 p.m., we'll be at 100 degrees. And then for the high temperature, 5, 6 p.m., 101. Winds are going to pick up this evening from the southeast up to 15 miles per hour, a few gusts of up to 20 possible. And even by midnight, we're still going to be in the low 80s. All right, let's check out the satellite and radar across the state of Texas. There is a complex in East Texas, but it's going to run out of room, fall apart before it can make it to South Central Texas because of this heat high. Now, if you don't want to see something depressed, and close your eyes because this is a look at the rainfall potential over the next seven days. Just a big old hole over Texas. We are going to stay dry because this heat high is going to move overhead and block out any rain for us. Now around this time of year, we look to the Atlantic Ocean to bring us at least some tropical moisture. Well, there's no development that's expected over the next five days, but that's not to say that we couldn't start to see things ramp up a little bit. What I'm going to show you right here is activity during the hurricane season. We're right about here. As you can see, the activity really does start to pick up, ramp up here soon, peaking on September 10th. Now, I'm not hoping for a hurricane by any means, but if we could get a weaker tropical storm or tropical system approaching in the Gulf of Mexico, that could swing some moisture our way and at this point we'll take anything we can get because as you can see little to no chance for rain over the next seven days highs above a hundred we're really counting on that gulf activity are you into mixed martial arts can you do any of that no my brother did some of did that some of my that? oldest brother yeah Apparently, the young people are really into mixed martial arts. Yeah, there's one around here specifically in San Antonio. His name's Ronald Anderson. He goes by Trey, and he's also a two-time world champion in karate. We come back. Larry Ramirez caught up with him this past week, and we'll hear his story. Plus, the Rams got their Super Bowl rings, and they are nice. Got that, too. Next. This week, we're introducing San Antonio to a rising young star in the world of mixed martial arts. Meet 15-year-old Ronald Anderson III, a.k.a. Trey. He's from Lavernia and trains at River City Martial Arts Academy. His parents' house is filled with trophies, belts, medals, and rings that are all on display. Trey is a 12-time karate world champion and one-time national karate champion, and that's just a taste of all he's managed to accomplish. Anderson is currently 20-4 and four in MMA fights and says he's known for his power in striking, but his path to MMA started differently than you might expect. Really, when I was younger, I used to be like bullied. So then my dad looked out for something for me to put in for self-defense. Then we found RCMA through friends, and then, yeah, everything blew up from there. He was having a, a hard time at school, having a hard time focusing, having a hard time uh, concentrating. Well, because outside things, people were talking to him, pushing, kicking. Trey was around six years old when he started going to River City Martial Arts Academy. His sensei remembers that day very well. It's like Trey walked in here and he said, make me feel important. And we did. Through the training, through the weeks, the months, and the years, he started to develop that confidence, started to build his self-esteem. Once word got out Trey was learning self-defense, the bullies started to leave him alone. No one really messes with me anymore because they kind of know like what I can do and stuff. Soft-spoken, but now able to protect himself, Trey hasn't had to use his skills to fight off a bully, and that's a good thing. I don't really like hurting people or anything like that, so when people just respect me and I can respect them, then I'm happy about it. When people started knowing what he was doing, it was almost like uh, uh, a rattlesnake doesn't have to bite you, he just has to rattle his tail. That's it. That, that's Mother Nature's warning signs to stay away from that. In 2021, Trey won the United States National Youth MMA Championship. 
earning himself a trip to the World Championships in Bulgaria. It was a great experience for me because I was really young back then. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a learning. That was my first year ever doing youth pancreation MMA. It was very nice. People were nice there. It was, it was cool seeing like all different countries there and stuff. This year, Trey won the National Youth Championship for the second year in a row and will head to Abu Dhabi in August to compete against the world once again. And this is going to be very different from last year, so I'm very excited for that. Okay, and why is it going to be different? Because I've trained, I'm more mentally prepared and everything. Okay. So I just feel better about it. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Thanks a lot, Larry. The New Orleans Saints placed wide receiver Michael Thomas and defensive end Marcus Davenport on the active pup list to begin training camp. Davenport went to Stevens High School in UTSA and is entering his fifth season with the Saints. As reported by the Athletics' Catherine Terrell, he's had a tough offseason needing two surgeries to repair an injured shoulder and three surgeries on his pinky finger that resulted in part of the digit being amputated. And how about this? Last night, the Los Angeles Rams unveiled their Super Bowl 46 championship rings, and it has the most carat weight in the history of championship rings. Rings. They've got the final of the Super Bowl, and the top is even removable, showcasing the SoFi Stadium field on the night that they won it all. Rams players and team execs all contributed to the design. I think they did a pretty good job with it, honestly. It looks pretty good. The top comes off? Yeah. Wow. They seem to be making these things really fancy these days, man. Yeah. How many of those guys are going to wear it, though? That's a good question. How many are going to lose it? <laughs> lose it. <laughs> lose that top. Yeah. It's like a Fabergé egg. <laughs> all right. We're heading over to SA Live, where they're cooking up some fun. Oh boy, we've got a ton of stuff going on right now. Are you in a hurry? How about noodles in 10 seconds? 10 seconds. Yeah. We have 10 second noodles here and Chang Tan joins us. Let's talk about this new spot. So it's brand new to the San Antonio and we have authentic broth following and you uh -huh. put all the fresh ingredients Ooh. in it and it cooks about 30 seconds and you're ready to eat. It's a great spot to socialize mm -hmm. and Enjoy family gathering and enjoy the fresh ingredients too. All different flavors, noodles, rice, everything else. Yes. We're going to give that a taste. All right. Ready to do a little bit of workout. Yep. All right. Patrick McDonald, Max Fitness is here. Million push-up challenge. The one million push-up challenge. So today we're going to talk about how you guys can get involved with the one million push-up challenge and also talk about Dream Week and uh, the involvement in it coming up soon. All right. And very quickly, we've got National Tequila Week, La Familia Cortez Restaurants. Miguel, what's going yes. on? How can win a prize, right? Okay. Yes, you can. We are not only have one day. We have in a whole week. And then we Right. Giving away a free trip to Mexico. That and more so on SA things. Live. All right, in case you needed a reminder, mm. it's going to be more than 100 degrees over the next several days. Hey, the weekend, though, if you want to enjoy some time by the pool out near one of the uh, local rivers, just know that the Frio River. It's flowing really slow this weekend, but the Comal near Guadalupe and Guadalupe near New Braunfels should be just fine. Just a little bit of slow going on there. Otherwise, it's going to be hot. Only a small chance for rain by Thursday. I have cousins who are on the Frio. They said that no floating this no. week. Oh. Mm. Mm -mm. It is tough. Speaking of tough, it's people doing those push-ups. Like, what do you say, a million push-ups or something? <laughs> Come on. You can do it. <laughs> How much time we got? <laughs> it's starts right. Now, get started. <laughs> All right, today on SA Live, add some colorful works of art to your happy space. We get up close with a local artist who is spreading joy one canvas at a time. And it's a push-up challenge for us on this Fit Friday. We'll see if we can earn those weekend calories. Plus, hey, get ready to celebrate National Theater Day is coming up this Sunday, and Market Square is going to be the place to be because there is a series of specials happening at each of the La Familia Cortez restaurants. You could win a trip to Mexico. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Hello, happy foodie Friday, yeah. <laughs> we are so happy it's Friday and I hope you're hungry. Yes, indeed. Ooh, that looks good. We're gonna get that broth going real well there. Good afternoon, happy Friday, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. I'm Dan Tobias Strusky, and we're starting with the food before we get to the push-ups, right, later? Yes. <laughs> Yes, our first guest today makes authentic Chinese soup and rice noodles that has a unique serving style, fresh ingredients, and some healthy options. Too. Yeah, this, this is a lot of fun. We've been learning all about it. And joining us now is the owner of 10 Second Noodles, is Chang Ten, and staff member, Lori Ann Benavidez. Good afternoon. Good How afternoon. are y'all? Good, Great. good. Thank Breath you for having us. Here. Okay, so 10 Second Noodles, what do we have going on here, first of all? Okay, so what we have going on here is 
Chinese hot pot. Okay. Also known as food soup or steamboat. All right. And so this goes way back, right? It does. It starts actually at around original origin is going to be 200 to 280 AD. Oh, really? Um, yes. So, There's an unofficial period of the Zhou Dynasty, but it didn't become official until they changed the pots to a copper pot. Interesting. I know Mike will store all that knowledge I, away. <laughs> yes, I will. So, so we have got different broths in here. What is the broth that, that's in this pot? So that's the kimchi broth, the kimchi flavor. A okay. little bit of hint of spices, yes. And then the one that Jen has right there? That's the original bone broth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we just throw... Yes, go ahead and throw and, it in. So you can do it however you like. You can throw in a couple pieces at a time, or you can do it one by one. So what's really cool about this is that you see the fire under here keeps that pot really hot. And you so, said that, that gets boiling, basically, yes. right? Yes. Be careful. Don't touch it. It's up to about 300 degrees. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Keep your script away from there, too. That's why we want you all to use the chopsticks. So we have some chopsticks here for your enjoyment. And the whole point is for people to come together and take in this experience, yes. right? Yes. So hot pot is originally meant to eat with a whole bunch of people, a whole big group of friends, sit and gather, talk while cooking at the same time. It's an enjoyable experience and a bonding experience. So it's almost like, I'm thinking, almost like a Chinese fondue. Yeah. Exactly, so yes. Actually, that. in some other countries, such as Switzerland, they call it fondue. Hmm. Oh. Yes. Okay. And so when you order, you can either get, this is kind of the, the personal... Yes, this is your here. personal little hot pot. And you can also get, uh, we have a different variation yes. of it. Yes. So this has no noodles. The other one does have rice noodles. And our mm -hmm. noodles, uh, you, there's a different way to do it. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you put in your meats first. Yeah. Okay. Add your veggies. All that goes in there. Yes. And this would yes. already be hot without it be being hot. In the restaurant, okay. yes. It would be a boiling hot. Oh, you got and once you add oh, all the cool little things that you want, you add your noodles, stir it for 10 seconds, and it's ready to go. Wow. That, and it cooks that quickly. It does, yes. that's because it's so hot. Careful not to bring your tongue. Mm. And Chang, tell us about the business. How has it been? How have people been reacting to it? When people they go? love it. Mm -hmm. Once they try it, because they love the style with all the fresh ingredients, mm -hmm. the authentic flavor of the broth. They always return and thank you. Hey, thank you for bringing this to San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. And then, and awesome. what do we have here as far as ingredients go in? Obviously, we've got some corn on the cob, mm -hmm. uh, lettuce, carrots, and then what are some of the other things here? So this is the beef slices, the Angus beef. Okay. And we have corn, fresh mushrooms. So we just toss these things mm -hmm. in just yes. like this. Toss them right in. Okay. And that will cook for a while, and that just comes out just looking right like that. Yes. And then. This doesn't even go on any noodles, just pop it right in. Pop right? it yeah. right in. You can even uh, serve with rice, you can put it on top of the rice, you oh, can wow. eat it like that too. So, yeah. Okay. okay, so I could just take this and then let me go like right here. Where are y'all located? We're located at the Forum. Uh huh. Yes, it's not too far away from here. All right. So and you have different broths, right? Oh, yes. That you can choose from and different options. Correct? Of course. Yeah. Yes, you can choose from many different broths. So on our menu here, we actually brought some menus to show y'all. Mm -hmm. Y'all can choose from the hot pot selection or on the back where you actually have the noodles. Yes. And for fair warning, if you don't like spicy or you can't handle spicy, mm -hmm. we have some little jalapenos right here to show you. Okay, ah. perfect. The spice level. And how is that spice there, Mike? This is this has got, got a little, little bit of a, to a bit of a That's going to be our kimchi broth. So it's going to be nice and spicy, but not too spicy. That one only has about, I want to say, two on the spice level. There's oh, really? one that has more. It's three. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Not as spicy as it can get. And then you have the noodles over there, Chang, right? Which one would you say is the most popular ordered right now from these small It depends. Pies? Some people uh -huh. like it. It's fast. It's ready to eat in, mm -hmm. in 10 seconds. Yeah. Okay. On the other nice. hand, the mini hot pot, you can take your time, you talk to your friends and families, mm -hmm. and because the food will cook that way. It takes a little bit longer. Oh, this is, and this is delicious. And this is, you said fish. <laughs> if you're struggling, we did bring yeah, some fish cake. for y'all. Fish cake. Okay. Mm. And you mm. have two other businesses, right? Yes, for another uh, mochi nut, uh, for the mochi donuts, and another for the matcha ice cream, too. Oh yeah, I remember that, because you were on the show with that a little yes. while back. So, and what's the sausage? Uh, what kind of sausage is it? That right is, uh, that's the beef sausage, yeah. The Just beef the meatballs, actually. Beef sausage. Oh, meat, yes. beef, meatball beef, sausage. Beef, meatball. Lorena, actually, do you have a favorite item? My favorite, my personal favorite is the kimchi. I could eat it every day. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> this is really nice, it's and good, like you right? said, it is fresh because you're, you're like exactly. You, like it's you fresh. It's right out. You don't have to worry about it getting cold either. Mm -hmm. um, literally, I, I try like to have as much as possible. And you start sweating a little too. bit. So there you go. You mentioned the fun story real quickly behind this. Yes. You said there was a lady that was bringing her husband's yes. soup. Yes. So 
way back when feudal era there was a gentleman who was studying for his imperial exams she mm -hmm. would bring him his lunch every day soup but by the time she got there the soup would be cold mm -hmm. so what she did is she figured out a way to bring him that soup by using the oils to separate it and just bring in the broth the ingredients separately and the noodles set all separately once you by get the to the spot got there, you just pour all the ingredients mm -hmm. in it and you get a fresh Soup and noodles. Isn't that awesome? I love yeah. that story behind it. Yes. Guys, thank you so much. You're yeah, welcome. You, I mean, a lot of folks love, love good, you know, Chinese, mm -hmm. Asian cooking. And this is, if you've never tried this before, this is really tasty. And a fun mm -hmm. experience, too. For more information, 10 Seconds Noodle, you can head over to salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or you can scan the QR code right there on your screen. Delicious. Thank you both thank so much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you for so having much. us. Okay. You know, we always have a social question just about every day, and maybe mm -hmm. it relates to something on the show, but you had a really good idea this morning, and it was... <laughs> Tell well, me something. Yeah. yeah, you can sing it. Go. Something good. Tell me something good. <laughs> yeah, we want to know. That. We want to know something good. It's Friday. Feel good Friday. Whatever so. it may be. But, yeah. um, is something about your kids? Just something yeah. in general? Yeah. Um, a win for the week? You yeah. Know? You woke you, up early, maybe? Did you have uh, something um, good I got week? a workout in this week that made me happy. So there you go. Wonderful. I think we're getting one today, too. <laughs> the yeah. push-ups, yeah. She is, at least. <laughs> what about you? Um, well, I got to work with Jen this week, oh, which is always fun. nice to do. Well, Fiona it. is off, so. Yeah, but uh, just tell us, you know, make make somebody happy, make somebody smile, just by telling us what uh, what could happen to you this week. So uh, let us know, and hopefully we can look at those a little bit later on in the show. Yep. So, okay, from a very delicious meal right now to and a happy tummy to creating a happy space. Yes, today we put the spotlight on Gio Di Sarita, a Mexican-American artist based here in San Antonio, but her work is being recognized around the globe. Take a look. In my family, thankfully, is all very creative, but I am the only painter mm -hmm. of the family, so I can only thank them. <laughs> Gio de Sarita is a San Antonio-based artist, sharing her artistic passion, sparking joy with color while enhancing spaces from all over the world with her talents. Yet her studio is located in the heart of the east side of San Antonio, allowing locals to step inside this artistic world. A world that started for Gio as a child, using paint as an outlet. So when I was very young, I had anger management problems Problems. That's what I say. Even though my mom is like, oh, don't be such an exaggerator. And I'm like, well, <laughs> trust me, if I didn't do that, mm -hmm. you would have had to deal with me even more. But yes, I used it as a way, a healthy way of removing my fears, my anger, my questions, you know, uh, instead of going out and acting out all the time, I will use the paper or the canvas or the paint and I will kind of like paint what I was feeling. I didn't know then that it was a way of me um, healing. Move forward to today, you're getting to do this for a living and people are buying your art <laughs> and your work. Uh, how does that feel to know, looking back at yourself as a child to now? Yes. What are you feeling? <laughs> well, honestly, every day I have to remind myself where I used to be. Sometimes it's very hard to really understand, oh my goodness, this is my life. Yeah. And remembering, coming from a person that in some point felt like, oh my God, I'm good for nothing mm -hmm. but art. Mm -hmm. And now being able to share my art, my talent with the community and uh, the world. And not only that, sharing my art, but sharing stories that make people feel something different than the reality. That's what makes me very happy about that. Gio's collections include lots of bold colors, each of them telling a story. Her newest collection, more of a surprise to her followers. I always did color, yes. very colorful things, and I wanted color to kind of tell the story of happiness and hope and all of that. And this time around, I wanted to do the unexpected from Gio Di Zurita, you know? So yes. I <laughs> did the Dancing with Ghosts series, which uh, it's the palette is black, white and gold Beautiful. only mm -hmm. and you see castles behind uh, the people dancing uh, the castle is a representation of our minds mm -hmm. our imagination mm -hmm. and the people that you see in this series are the memories sometimes i think i'm more of a storyteller than a painter or an artist because the painting process is fun but the 
creation process of what is this going to mean and what do I want the person, uh, the spectator to see and feel because you can walk in here and be like I don't like abstract, I like more realistic things, oh I have something for you, I, I don't like animals but I like nudes or I like whatever you know mm -hmm. I'll have probably something for you. We caught up with one of her collectors who is adding Distorito art to her happy space. Her pieces reflect color and light and hope and joy but it also transitions to a bit mercurial and, and haunting and um, sort of longing um, and then you have pieces that are just fun and whimsical uh, her shoes and some of the self portraits and some of the custom work that she does I, I don't look for the idea of I want you to see my artwork and always uh, see my style on it but I want you to feel the story if you're looking to add the artistic touch from the talented Geo, you can go also to my website that is disurita.com if you find me on Instagram. Authentic pieces are available, but she also has prints of her work that you can buy. Yes, very cool. The artwork. prints, right? Very yeah. affordable. But she's also working on a new series right now, and she's always at the first Friday events at Brick, so you can go meet her. It's really neat that she's local. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's some pieces that are more expensive, but beautiful work. Yeah, really, really cool looking. Hey, for more information on Gia Dizorita, head over to SALive.com, of course. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just uh, scan that QR code right there mm -hmm. at the bottom of your screen. All right, when SA Live continues with a push-up challenge and ways to stay healthy this summer. Plus, we take you to ZDT Amusement Park in Seguin. From roller coasters, go-karts, they even have some water rides to keep you cool this summer. We'll